it's just really exciting. I think we're live. Welcome everyone to a live recording of episode 110 and already <laughs> Ruben's joined the chat. So speaking yes. of Ruben, we wish Ruben could be here, but unfortunately work obligation, not able to be here. So Ruben, we're sorry that you're not here. Ruben, missing you incredibly. That's right, Ruben, we miss you and we love you and we hope you're well. So how are you doing, Andrew? So, as I believe, I'm doing fantastic. It's very exciting to be here. I miss Ruben, but I'm still very, very excited to be here. Very happy. Agreed. So Ruben, oh. we're sorry that you're not here. Ruben, missing you incredibly. Oh. <laughs> Feedback. Love you. Just wait. wait. There it is. What's going on? There it is. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. Oh, headphone okay. <laughs> malfunction. We are not Joe Rogan. So we're really excited. We're going to continue right into where we left off with Rocky Five. Rocky is selling everything. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest garage sale in history. <laughs> Do you remember where we are right now, Andrew? Uh, yeah, okay. of course. I mean, I missed a few uh, really, really important episodes, a couple that I was like really hoping to, to be involved in. But, uh, but yeah, I know these movies like the back of my hand. I know exactly what's lurking around the corner. I don't want to spoiler alert anybody out there who hasn't been up to speed with this, so we'll we'll leave it up to them. Sure. To I think if anyone's actually watching this video, <laughs> <laughs> never one if anyone actually watched the video. Number two, we do have listeners of our show, and I, I have always said I don't think there's anyone listening to our show that isn't extremely familiar with Rocky and Rocky Five and what's going on. But there are people who haven't seen the movie in quite some time. Uh, I know, so there are listeners who are listening to each episode. They're like, oh, yeah, that part. Because I think Rocky Five is probably the least viewed. It's the least viewed, yeah. for, for sure, without a doubt. Uh, the one thing about Rocky Five is I've seen it so many times as well because this one's made it onto television right. in the recent years so many times, whereas the others have sort of fell off. Okay. You know, you don't see them on television as much. And nobody watches television any, anymore no. anyway. It was in, in the more, more recent years that I was watching that, but... I definitely revisit Rocky plenty. So I saw this one, ah, geez, just a couple months ago. I watched it. I think it was before I came to do the last podcast. I I watched it from start to finish. I'm finding that I'm enjoying watching this piecemeal and discussing it. I'm enjoying the movie more than I thought I was going to. I think the season I was anticipating a lot of like, we've made jokes and had some fun with the naked French teacher and things like that. Mm. <laughs> and those things are coming. But for the most part, I'm enjoying this film and then seeing the heart that it is. Because after reviewing parts three and four so much and seeing just kind of how those are so crazy and they don't seem to be grounded in the same reality that one and two are. So five at the very least puts us back to having Rocky Balboa as a film and the Creeds as a film. I saw Creed 2 last weekend. That was my first time. Your thoughts? It doesn't disappoint. And the thing that I thought was really cool about it is it's its own movie. Right. Going directly to what we're doing right now, we're we're looking at Rocky 5. Rocky 5 has a different essence than 3 and 4. Right. Right. And Creed captures the same essence of Rocky 5 and Rocky 1 and Rocky 2. Is that just was a lot more grittier and more real. Right. You know? So I'm fresh off of a huge Rocky high. I remember just feeling really incredible after that movie was finished. Nice. And so I was really pumped to uh, get the invitation for next episode. Oh, good. Well, here we go. So we're going into the auction of their stuff. Now, for the record, Stallone wanted the Rocky IV robot for this scene. I think we mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. He wanted it here, and I think it would have been great to have it here. It's too bad he couldn't do like a George Lucas and do a a CGI imprint of (laughs) of the robot. Maybe they'll do, uh, they'll re-release the Rocky movies. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, do a a CGI. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they'll put in all the characters uh, that, you know, (laughs) Apollo will make a comeback somehow. Oh, man. All right, here we go. Let's watch some of this. May we hear an accident, please? Are you done? So. <coughs> Sorry for my coughing. Really troublesome. I know. I've been, I've been had this lingering, and I do a lot of podcast talking, and I feel like it gets aggravated when I'm talking, mm. obviously. So I'm always like... <coughs> 
So this is a really cool shot even here, having uh, Rocky Jr. sitting on the motorcycle, motorcycle that we saw in Part 3. Mm-hmm. If you remember, there was that montage at the beginning of Part 3 where Rocky is riding with Adrian down the street. That's with the, no helmets. With no, I love it. Just locks just flowing. He looked like a champion. Both aren't wearing helmets, yeah. and hair is flowing. Both so low to Talia Shire's long, flowing hair. Yeah. Rocky Jr. is sitting on this bike that's just been sold. You see there, oops, I pointed with my finger. You see there the sold sign. This is where the Rocky robot would have been. And maybe this scene would have been the son with the robot, you know, crying that his companion or his friend was leaving because the yeah. robot was supposed to be a, a gift for Stallone's son, I think is what it was. No, it was for Polly. No, but I mean in real life. Oh, okay, in in real life. Sorry, sorry. yeah, no, that's fine. Sorry. That's it's. Yeah, I so. think as far as the movie goes, though, like the using the motorcycle was it's like probably a little bit more legit. Uh, I think that motorcycle is great. Like in in Rocky Three, it's like uh, one of the characters of the movie, in my opinion. It's like really Rocky kind of. It's the Estal- Italian stallion motorcycle. Yeah, it, right. It's, it's, it's all the Rocky that's colors. Right. It's got it's the ro- it got the stallion on the side. Mm-hmm. What I like too is we hear background of an auctioneer, so there's we're, we're to assume we don't see it, but we're to assume there's a crowd of people somewhere on the property going through and essentially <laughs> taking things off the walls and buying them. A bunch of vultures, right? Yeah. You know what was really cool as well is like they've got the introspective Rocky movie, the original score, yes. right, playing in the background, and it just it's the emotions in this scene are are, are pretty heavy, right? Hey, shit. Bike's been sold. Hey, bike's been sold. Get off the bike. Come on. Hey, what was the twenty-five thousand for? I missed that. Did they say what it was for? Sorry. Let me hear that again. Sold. Get off the bike. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta hear that again. The captions don't say, but he's talking. Get off the bike. Sorry. Ah. Yeah. I heard Rocky Balboa something. Yeah, then... no, I think it's just sort of indiscriminate. Don't worry about it. We've been down before. I'll get it all back. So this is a, a terrible scene here because he says, don't worry about it. We've been here before. Well, not Rocky Jr. Not, not Robert. <laughs> Robert's a, a, a silver spoon kid. <laughs> Robert has never been here before. This is a completely new experience. Mm-hmm. And maybe Rocky's just saying, we've been here before. We'll get it all back. No. No, yeah. you will not be getting it all back. No. Robert has, he's had no pain in his life. <laughs> no. No, he's had a very silver spoon's life. Yeah. Absolutely. Just got to stick together, right? Eh? Oh, team. Yeah, right. <laughs> Come on. You know, Mickey used to say a fight ain't over until you heard the bell. We ain't heard a bell yet, have we? So there we go. They're selling his boxing gloves from his first heavyweight fight. Boy, that's pretty sad, a state of affairs, that he has to sell that. Yeah, I still remember seeing this in the theater and just a 12-year-old. Yeah. And I was terribly emotional about the whole thing. Like, even now, I'm I'm feeling... I think it's because yeah. I just saw Creed and I got to have my Rocky fix. It's like, he's like one of my old friends. Right. Just now, I'm just looking at this. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. You know, how the mighty fall sometimes. It's crazy. He's got to sell those gloves. Uh, but now we have a scene here for our, I was speaking to our audio listeners. The next scene now is, it looks like Rocky is in his attic. He's uh, going through some stuff, memorabilia, the past, you could say. He's in a trunk of stuff. He's pulling out the old, the old Rocky One gear. Now, what's your thoughts on this Rocky One gear scene? Mm, I love it. Brushing off dust off the hat. Fits like a glove. Hey, it still fits. Why wearing those clothes? Just going through some of the stuff up there, and I found them, and they feel kind of comfortable. Well, I was looking all over for you downstairs. Kind of depressing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, what's this doing you? <laughs> so, what's your thoughts here? What Rocky's motive here for going through his clothes and putting them on? Why do you think he's doing this? Obviously, there's a lot that's been going on building up to this one here. You know, like the retirement, the fight with Drago. It, everything is so close to that still, right? And then for this to happen, the character is retreating within himself. He's, he's lost all the stuff, and now he's kind of reconnecting with the real Rocky. Yeah. You know, now all that stuff's gone, and what's left is that person, the, the character of Rocky, and all the things that, you know, his virtue and everything is what 
you know, throughout the whole entire series is what uh, the, the fans always gravitated to, is that he had lots of heart and virtue and character. This moment here, he's retreating within himself. He's going backwards. So Bud said here that he thinks he's depressed. He thinks Rocky might be feeling depressed. Oh, wouldn't you? Yeah. I, I feel a little <clears throat> depressed as well. Maybe he was flying pretty high and sure. come crashing down. Millions. Lost millions. What I love, though, is Adrian. There's no resentment in her. She's not berating Rocky. Give her a full credit as a spouse for just being there for Rocky and truly showing Rocky that she loves him for him and not the money. Yep. No, she just says it's kind of depressing. I think what she's finding depressing is the house is empty. Yes. Yeah. All their stuff is literally being sold and taken away. And so now Rocky's got in his hands the glasses. I guess it's possible that she could have kept those old glasses for all these years. Now, in the timeline of the Rocky universe, it has been about 15 years since they got married. 14, 15 years since, you know, 76 was Rocky 1. It's now 1990. So it's been about 14 years since they've been married. And their son's about 14 in the film. So it kind of works mm-hmm. out. The age of Sage Stallone kind of works out in the release of the film age, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So in a weird yeah, way, it kind of makes sense. I know. We already <laughs> talked about this. The, the yeah. timeline for the Rocky universe is kind of like... It's all over the place. Yeah. But uh, ironically, right now... Now it makes sense. So you could almost do Rocky one, two, and five, and it would actually make sense. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not crazy to think that she would have these glasses all this time. You could have a pair of glasses. For sure. Years. Oh yeah. I wonder if the prop department found the actual glasses that Talia Shire wore, or if these are just lookalikes. We'll have to do some investigating. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Mm. You. I remember when you took them off. That's right. First time I ever kissed you, man. Kissed you. Here's your name. I won't go out for a little bit, you know, just take a little walk. So I don't feel better, but hey, could you talk to the kid? Cause he's, he's really taking his heart. You know? Where are you going? I, I thought I'd go to Andy's. So he wants to get his drink on. He's going to go to Andy's. <laughs> He's going to Andy's. He's going to get his drink on. Do you remember what the name of the other bar was in the original Rocky? I think it was called Lucky 7. You can Google that. You can be our mm-hmm. Google guy. Ruben's not here, so you got to be the Google guy for Ruben. I'm ready to go here. So he's going to go get his drink on, regardless. So he gets a little bit... Uh, he's going to get a little bit hammered. Take the sting out of losing millions of dollars. Yeah, the Lucky 7 Tavern. Yeah. Lucky 7. So here's Andy's bar. It's full of graffiti and everything. Now, he's looking back at the bar here in kind of like a... Want to fight? Like, if that saunter he's got there is kind of like a... I think you, know how, a little, you know how drunk guys do that? Yeah, they just, got, they just got, a little drunk. Yeah, hey, but he's looking at nobody. <laughs> but he, he, but he's looking back into the bar. And you almost get the feeling he's getting that kind of... Yeah, well, some other day I'll get you. Do you catch that posture that he has? He's almost like chirping at him when he leaves. Mm-hmm. See, he's like... Uh, He's like, ah, oh, forget it. Forget those bums. He's a little dark spot right now. Yeah. You know, this is uncharacteristic for Rocky. Think about every Rocky movie we've seen. And, yeah. You know, the, the, the scenes in the Rocky movies, he's never been intoxicated. No. No. Last time we saw him drink was Rocky 1, where he was drinking in his apartment, even when he was going to fight. Uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, you don't drink that piss. Don't drink that piss. Yeah, don't drink that piss before a fight. Yeah. <laughs> That's for Mickey. But he's got no fights coming up. Yeah, so he's you know it's time for him to let loose now. Let, yeah, right. He's gonna let go, get uh, build that gut for Copland. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's looking at the gym, Mighty Mix. Yo, how you doing, Mick? How you doing, Mick? That's a great shot there. Yeah, man. So this music that's playing in the background night right now, it's the same music that they used for the coma scene. Yeah. Yeah. So Bill Conti, of course, is back for Rocky Five. So he's in mixed gym. It's deserted, dilapidated, beer bottles. Some punching bags are still, you know, lying around and hanging. I really like this one, too. He pulls out. Yeah. He's intoxicated. Just boom. Look at that. Yeah, it's awesome. Good call. No gloves, no nothing. Just steps in. I wouldn't want to be on the business end of that. No. So this gym is owned by Rocky Jr. Robert Robert owns the gym. Yeah, it's in Robert's name. That's right. Mickey left it to Robert. That's right. 
Now I'm gonna pause it before we get to this, but we'll just watch this part here. Okay, so we know what's coming up, and I'm gonna play it all the way through, because I don't want to talk over it. So when we hit play, I want it to play all the way through. I remember and I, when I saw this in the theaters when I was 15, and I saw that Burgess Meredith as Mickey was coming. Mm -hmm. It was going to be in this film. Of course, I, I think I must have assumed at that age that, yes, it was going to be a flashback. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a zombie Mickey, even though <laughs> <laughs> even though it's pretty close. Burgess Meredith here is... He looked pretty yeah. pretty, uh, pretty aged. He, well, yeah, so he had aged, obviously, since, well, since 1983 was his last appearance as Mickey. Mm -hmm. Now he's doing it again in 1990, so seven years later. But this scene is probably the most touching and heartwarming scene in the franchise. Mm -hmm. And I would challenge anyone to pick a scene in the Rocky franchise that it's more, I don't know, sad and happy and powerful and everything all at once. Sorry, where in the timeline is this happening? What's your thoughts? Because it's never officially expressed. We know it's before the Apollo fight, but which one? Super Fight 1 or Super Fight 2? Super Fight 2. Agreed. What's your reasoning for that? Super Fight 1 was a, a fluke. Even right. Mickey felt it was a fluke. And the second one around is they were trying to beat Apollo Creed. Right. It's the relationship between Rocky and Mickey. In number two, they kind of solidified their bond together. After that, he always looked to Mickey as his dad, father figure. That's why this introspective scene is so poignant for the whole entire series. That time there, that was when those two guys were like, hey, we're together on this 100%. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's what I think. I, I've had some people say that this scene takes place before the first fight in Rocky 1. I disagree as well that, it's, that it is, in fact, before Super Fight 2 because their relationship is so much more father-son. I'd like to hear your thoughts, people, if you think it's Rocky 1 or Rocky 2 that this flashback scene takes place. We got a couple comments here. Oh, that was uh, yeah, a yeah, comment. of course. So, heck, we're not going to say what you said. So, this was Heck Mel Donado. We just want to let you know we read your comment. Rocky 5 is not what you said. We don't condone that type of talk. Jeremy Jason says, I watch this scene at least two or three times a week. It helps keep me motivated. That's awesome. That's the kind of talk we like to hear. Jeremy Jason says, do it for Mick. Okay, so we're going to play the scene right now, and let's, uh, let's watch it together. We're not going to stop it. Slip the jab! That's right. That's it. Hey, I didn't hear no bell. Okay. All right, that's right. Lift the jab. That's it. Mentalize. See that bum in front of you. You see yourself doing right, and you do right. That's pretty. That's very pretty. Time. Ah, oh, come here, Rock. My God, you're ready, ain't you? That Apollo won't know what hit him. You're gonna roll over him like a bulldozer, an Italian bulldozer. You know, kid, I know how you feel about this fight that's coming up. Because I was young once, too. And I tell you something. Well, if he wasn't here, he, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that you're here and doing as well as you're doing gives me, what do you call it, a motivation, huh? To stay alive. Because I think that people die sometimes when they don't want to live no more. Nature's smarter than people think. And nature is smarter than people think. Little by little, we lose our friends. We lose everything. We keep losing and losing till we say, you know, oh, what the hell am I living around here for? I got no reason to go on. But with you, kid, boy, I got a reason to go on. And I'm going to stay alive. And I will watch you make good. And I'll never leave you. And I'll never leave you until that happens. Because when I leave you, you'll not only know how to fight, you'll be able to take care of yourself outside the ring, too. Is that okay? It's okay. Okay. Now, I got a little gift for you. Oh, uh, man. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Look at this. See that? <laughs> this is the favorite thing that I have on this earth. And Rocky Marciano, give me that. You know what it was? His cufflink. Huh? That's great. And now I'm giving it to you. And it, it's got to be like a, like an angel Chills. on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. and, you. and if you ever get hurt and you feel that you're going down, 
This little angel is gonna whisper in your ear. He's gonna say, Get up, you son of a bitch! Because Mickey loves you. Okay? Thanks, Mick. All right. I love you too. Go after him, kid. So, a lot to talk about in that. It definitely takes place in the universe of Rocky II. There's no way that conversation took place before their first fight. No way. Yeah. The relationship had grown more, obviously, as a father-son type relationship. Secondly, I love how he says, this little angel is going to whisper in your ear, Get up! Yes! <laughs> it's not a whisper. He yells. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that part. What's really cool about this flashback of Burgess Meredith, not just to the character, but Burgess Meredith was like a very talented actor with oh, yeah. an insane resume. And for Stallone to have scored him for Rocky One was like nothing short of a coup yeah. to get someone like him because he really brought validity to this whole series. Much like, what's his name, who was uh, Obi-Wan? Al Guinness. Right? It was great that he was able to come back and do that scene at that level, yeah. right? Just and put forth so much emotion. I don't know if most people haven't seen this enough times and are insane like I am, but you can see he's old in this one here. Sure. But, but Mickey was old in Rocky know, one. One, one and two, <laughs> yeah. but he was kind of drooling a little bit there because yeah. he was so passionate about yeah. what he was talking about there. So it's just the power. I remember seeing this as a kid. I kind of sunk in my seat and I cried to oh, myself Oh yeah, I, when I was a little guy. Well, just like Jeremy Jason there was saying, he watches this two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that two times, two or three times a week. That's too many crying. Yeah. Too, too much crying. I talked to a grown man who, uh, who who tear up and cry during this scene. There's no shame in that. It's just it's so amazing because Rocky, of course, at this moment is the lowest part he's been. He's lost all of his finances, security for his family. He's in the gym where he got it all. And his father figure is gone. He's just feeling really, really, really down right now. That scene with Mickey saying, just, you know, the angel be on your shoulder and this cufflink. This what he says, you know, Rocky Marciano gave me this, it's this cufflink and now I'm giving it to you. That's music swell. Mm -hmm. And as he's holding it up, it's just like, oh, we see in Rocky 2, Apollo Creed is wearing a cufflink. Yeah, we have to find, we yeah. have to look into this a little more. But he says that Marciano gave it to him and they gave it to some other bum. So if you really want to get deep into some Rocky trivia or a speculation we could argue that maybe rocky marciano gave it to tony's camp and then tony gave it to apollo the same way mickey gave it to rocky i could go on of my some theories that i have about the whole that would take an entire episode okay for me for me <laughs> to elaborate what's your cliff notes version of who the other bum is i think it's apollo but apollo's character is really based on muhammad ali right Right? right, Rocky Marciano had a little feud with Muhammad Ali back in the day. Oh, really? They cross they it's cross paths. It's not that they cross paths. It's just that you know they were from two different eras of boxing. Right, Cassius Clay at the time became Muhammad Ali was very different and outspoken, and a lot of like white people did not appreciate a black person talking that way. No. And so he was really chastised a lot. And Rocky Marciano was Italian, and his community did not. I guess, support that kind of behavior. And so he caught a lot of flack. If you would call Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay, there's a few scenes out there on the internet you, and right. you've seen the movie. He did not appreciate that after he had been given his new name in the Muslim community. Right. Rocky Marciano used to call him Clay and Muhammad never, ever questioned him about it. And then later on, they did like a computer kind of right. simulated fight to sort of drum up some money for the two of them that were in financial situations. So cliff notes, that's longer than a cliff note. But I believe that in this story that sure. Apollo Creed's character was so great, which is why I'm a firm believer that they need to make a prequel about Apollo Creed. We've yeah. got, I got to see the story of him, that he was so great and so amazing. Yeah. He met Marciano, and Marciano gave him that because he was like, wow, you're a great champion. Like, yeah. You're amazing. You know, it's funny. It wasn't until I did this podcast where I even considered the other cufflink going to Apollo. I don't know mm -hmm. why I never caught on. Maybe it was obvious, 
that it was. No, that's a real tough Easter yeah, egg. Yeah. Okay. That's what. Okay. So I'm not alone in that. Before we move on, oh, yeah. one thing that's oh, like yeah, this, the most important thing about this one here is this scene is that Rocky is at his lowest. He's down. But this whole thing is about when you're down, remember, get up, you son of a bitch, because Mickey loves you. Yeah. And so right after this, you can see Rocky is at the lowest point he could possibly be. He starts getting out of that hole. Okay, good. We'll see if he does. A little tear falling down his face, Rocky's face. I think it's the first time we've seen him cry with a tear. I know he... He got teary-eyed with the coma, but did he actually shed a tear? He cried. He yep. cried in Rocky 2. Oh, he cried in Rocky 3, of course, when Mickey died, duh. Oh, here we go, the uh, R&B version of Take You Back. From the streets cometh a man, a fighter, doing the best that I can to survive. Yes, and the survival of the fittest, strive for what is mine, the Lord is my witness. Many believe in what they see, and I wonder, what do they see in me for a man? All right, so what's happening here for our audio listeners is they've moved back to the neighborhood. They actually are moving into Polly's apartment. <laughs> yeah, the old townhouse where Rocky One started, where he went in there and Polly threw the turkey in the uh, in right, the alleyway. In the alley. Is it the same place? I think that they're Led to alluding to it. We're in Rocky Universe right now, so anything can is possible. It's like what do they call that? Alternate universes right. and stuff. I just wonder if it's actually the same. I know it's. He says, "Come move to my place." And they are. Well, he says he's about to say it. He's like, it's good that I kept the old place, eh, Rob? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, good point. And uh, they got everything in this back of this pickup truck. They're clothes, basically. They have no effects. They just have clothing. And I love how everyone's standing around gawking at the failed ex-champion without helping him move in. Yeah. <laughs> no one's lending the hand. They're just staring at him. There's one guy about to get Paulie's attention on the left there. He's got his hand on Paulie's shoulder. I wonder what he does. I never noticed that guy. You can't believe it. This kid's taking this too good. Yo, I got it. Hey, Russ. It's Girl good cheering. Place, right? How you doing? It saves money. Yeah. Get back. Right? So Paulie's trying to feel like a bit of a hero here. He's kind of caused some of this mess. <laughs> he kind of. <laughs> He's like, hey, it's a good thing I kept the place. It saves money. You guys don't have to pay extra rent or mortgage. You can just come crash. The- See, look, I'm good, right? I'm, I'm, I'm helpful. Paulie's such a scumbag. <laughs> oh, Paulie. So he's going to talk about how they can improve the place here. Yo, I got it. Hey, Rob. It's well, somebody did offer their help. Place, right? It saves money. Get back. Right? Look at them on the front there. It's a win. So Polly says a little bit of aluminum on the front, and it's a winner. And Rocky actually looks up and goes, ugh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's like cheering, yeah, Rocky, the champ's here. Yeah, Rocky's back in the neighborhood. They all love Rocky. Sure. Welcome back, Rocky. We love you. It's only, it's only temporary, man. All right, I think we're going to stop it there for this. Do we, what time do we start recording, remember? I cannot remember. Oh, darn it. Okay, so I think this next scene is... Uh, actually, no, we'll end up with that after this phone call. Yeah, we'll, this one's a yeah, good scene. Yeah, okay. I think this is a good one to end it off on. So Rocky's been welcomed to the neighborhood by fans and neighbors, and he's saying thanks, you know, and then he turns to Adrian and says, this is temporary, honey. Don't worry, we're not going to be here forever. Again, I love his enthusiasm, his optimism. We'll see how long that lasts for. <laughs> Does Adrian die in this neighborhood? <laughs> she, I feel. I think she does. I mean, we I think. Know. I think so. Like when we're in um, uh, Rocky Balboa, it's basically the same place, yeah. right? And it's a different place, and it's a different place in Creed, but it's the same place in the Rocky universe. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And if it is a different place, they never left the neighborhood. They went back to the neighborhood, and that's that's where the Stallones yeah, stay. Rock, in Rocky Balboa, he still kind of mows around the neighborhood. He's got his diner and everything, but it's still kind of the, not it's the best the, part of Philly. Yeah, it's the neighborhood. He's yeah. in the neighborhood. So Adrian's in a room, and there's a rotary phone. For, rotary phone. For you kids who don't know, this is what a rotary phone looks That's like. That's a telephone. Yeah. There's nothing it does except for you can talk to a person. That's yeah, it. you can dial out, and you might have call waiting if you... Uh, no, if these ones... You could you have couldn't. call... You, yeah, because you hang up, and you, then you lift it up, the person on the other end. You could, you do could on that yeah. one? Yeah. Really? Remember to be a click-click. 
So you'd be on uh, the phone. Okay, it's been a long time, right? Yeah, and you'd hear a <laughs> click, click, and that means somebody's trying okay. to call. No, yeah, you just hit the and you, you hit the receiver. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it ha- it's been so long. Like when was the last time you used one of those? Oh man, yeah. yeah. And I love how call waiting now. If somebody's calling, you well, you get the phone thing. It says somebody's trying to call, and you get like end and ignore or whatever. Yeah. I still don't know why people even say hello. They know it's you. Yeah, yeah. So the phone's ringing. Adrian's in her room, and let's find out who she's uh, who's calling Adrian this time of the night. Hello? Mrs. Balboa, George Washington. Yes? Mrs. Balboa, can you hear it? Listen close, you must be able to hear it. Hear what? The sound of the parade going by, of opportunity knocking. I mean, what's it going to take to get you people to realize and giving you a chance to pull yourselves together again? Let me handle your husband's career and the money will pour in. You can start living like human beings again. Listen, Mr. Duke, we're living like human beings. You ought to try it sometime. Leave my husband alone. Wait a minute. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> so George Washington Duke knows, obviously, the situation that Rocky and his family are in. He knows what he can provide for them, and uh, he offers them a way out. I mean, he knows if Adrian wasn't there, he could get Rocky to fight again. Yeah. I love his character. George Washington Duke is a great antagonist. I think he's... Highly underrated in the franchise. I think it's partly because he falls into the Rocky Five umbrella of nobody liking this film or very few people. When there's a lot to like in this film, I think him, as an actor and character, he's a lot of fun to watch. It's really good. Apollo is a great character. Mickey was a really great character. And some of the things that fundamentally made them awesome was the inspiration for them, right? And, of course, George Washington Duke's inspiration is Don King. Yes, Right, and then he just played it his own way, really, really well. It was cool when you had that interview. He did, he really did explain it, you know. And he said, "No, no, hundred percent, that was the thing." But yeah. I, I did my my Don King, like right. I was the Don King. So he was a really great character. I really like the dynamics in this movie. Like everyone gives it so much flack, right? Right. I have no feelings about it that are different from any of the others. You know, I just oh, feel it's like such a a great addition to the the saga right and then you go into the next and then to the next oh, yeah that's fantastic great awesome so we'll stop there so andrew thank you for coming on today's show uh, you're, I'll just... you're so welcome thank you for having me it's yeah. a great time i love it and spoiler alert <laughs> we're gonna do another recording if you want to stick around and watch the next one we're gonna do episode 111 andrew will be our guest host again and we'll uh, discuss further adventures of rocky and the gang and how they're doing back in philly they definitely have taken it back. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Ding, ding. <laughs>